Hello everyone, I am Mandar Kolhatkar, I am in 8th grade. I am going to tell you about CANSAT, how it works, what it's made of and how to make it. Let's get started. Okay, first let's see what a CANSAT is and how it works. And then we will be learning how to uh, install some software we will be requiring for uh, making the CANSAT work and etc. So first of all, what is a satellite? A satellite is any body that orbits a planet and these can be natural satellites like the moon or artificial satellites which are man-made satellites put into orbit of a planet using rockets. What is a CANSAT? A CANSAT is a simulation, this is the most textbook answer you can find of a CANSAT. It is a simulation of a real satellite integrated within the volume and shape of a soft drink can. Basically, it is a very simplified imitation of a real satellite and it is designed to fit within a soft drink can. Now, what is our CANSAT that we are going to build? It is a very small and very, spied, very simplified version of a real satellite just like a CANSAT. Only difference being, it is all fitted inside the body of a wooden body of a satellite it's like a miniature uh, body of a satellite and uh, everything is fitted inside this so that technically makes it not a can set because it's not inside a can but we have uh, call, we are calling it can set because we had intended it to be uh, placed inside a can so it basically our can set maps atmospheric parameters like temperature, pressure, humidity in real time and transmits this data to a ground station. And uh, this can set was basically meant to be a technology demonstrator and learning tool to uh, show to students how an actual satellite works and what are the basic systems that go inside it. So here we have a basic block diagram, our CANSAT, it reads this atmospheric parameters, temperature, pressure, humidity, it transmits them to a ground station and here or in the ground station, this data is displayed on a web page. So we'll uh, explain more on how this works uh, soon. So what are the systems of, a, of the CANSAT? So, uh, as I said, a CANSAT was, is meant as a technology demonstrator to explain to students what uh, the systems are inside a real satellite. So, these are the systems that the CANSAT shares with real satellites. More Real satellites have more, more systems than this, but these are the basic core four systems. First is the controller unit. The controller unit is the unit that controls all the other systems and you could say it is the brain of the satellite and the controller inside our CANSAT is the node MCU. It's a device called a node MCU board. So uh, I'm going to be like uh, using controller and node MCU interchangeably. So just remember that. So our node MCU basically uh, can we can upload our codes to the node MCU board using uh, a particular software that will be uh, I'll also be showing how to download that software later on so uh, we can just upload can just upload different kinds of code uh, to the node MCU board to make it do different tasks next system is the sensory system the system consists of all the sensors in a can set in our can set a sensor can be any component that maps data from the physical world and uh, we have two sensors here in our CANSAT DHD11 and BMP280 and the data that they are mapping or reading is temperature and humidity which the DHD11 reads and BMP280 reads the temperature, pressure and altitude. Now as you can see you may have noticed that both these sensors read the temperature parameter. But uh, the parameter that we are displaying 
the temperature parameter is read by the DHT11 because uh, it is more accurate. So both of these read temperature data, but the temperature data we are showing is read by the DHT11 because it is more accurate. The next system is the telemetry system and this system basically consists of the transmitter and receiver of the satellite and this allows it, uh, not satellite, sorry, can set. Also in the real satellite, uh, the telemetry system consists of a transmitter and a receiver. So this basically allows it to, trans, to talk with the ground station. In our CANSAT's case, we aren't really receiving any data from the ground station. So we only have a transmitter module which is inbuilt into our node MCU. And this is one of the reasons why we have chosen our node MCU controller board because as you can see this silverish chip here also in the presentation I have outlined it. This is the transmitter and it is basically a Wi-Fi transmitter chip and this Wi-Fi transmitter chip enables us to be able to send our data that we have read from the sensor to the web page. So that's what I was saying to our ground station and that's why uh, let's just go to an earlier slide. That's why we are displaying our data here on a web page in this block diagram as I have shown because uh, we are da transmitting data to, uh, to the internet and from the internet we can very easily see the data on a web page. And so in this case the ground station is basically any, uh, any device that opens the web page. That can be the la a laptop, a mobile phone, tablet etc. So the reason we have why we have chosen this is because like it is very simple to see all the data. Like we, the node MCU just gives us a particular URL. We put that into our browser. We search and we are getting all our, value, uh, all our data just then and there. So we will just show you how the uh, web page looks also soon. Last system is our power supply and this basically just powers all the other systems in the CANSAT. Uh, CANSAT uses a 3.3 volt lithium ion battery which is rechargeable for powering all the other systems. And last is our ground station. The ground station is the receiver and it's basically it uh, it uh, supports the web page it displays the web page on which all the data is displayed now here you can see this is the web page on which all the data has been displayed uh, here on the topmost part there is a URL that is put here it's a series of numbers it's an IP that this node MCU gives us and we can just put into the uh, search bar of any browser then the main web page itself First of all, we are seeing a line graph here. So the orange is the temper, the orange line is the temperature values, the blue line is the humidity, and the purple line is the altitude. Then below the line graph, we are also seeing the data in a tab, in a what do we call it, a table format. And uh, this you will be also able to see once you have built the satellite, the CANSAT. So now let's download few softwares that we will require to run our uh, CANSAT and to uh, upload code to our CANSAT. So first just open up Google Chrome or any other browser that you have. And uh, so I just opened up a new tab here and type Arduino IDE. Arduino is A-R-D-U-I-N-O and IDE. Okay. So this is our software uh, that we will require for uploading codes to our Node MCU controller board. Just search that. And we want to click on this link that we get Arduino software. So now we are in this downloads page. And uh, he, from here we can download our Arduino IDE installer. So there are various different versions of Arduino IDE here, but we are just going to click the topmost option that we see 
once we are in this website. So, as you can see, this is the Arduino IDE 2.1.0, and I'm going to be downloading this version. Now there are various uh, links for different operating systems. I'll be clicking Windows 10 and newer uh, link because my, my system runs on Windows 11. But you, if you have Linux or Mac OS, you can click those options. Once you click on your uh, option, uh, the software, will, the website will take you to this page. Uh, the download is free, but you can uh, contribute uh, by giving some money to the Arduino uh, company, but we are just going to download it for free. So here, uh, there is a just download button, as you can see, I am going to click on that. Now this takes me to the installer, the, excuse me, download page. Uh, so what I am going to do before downloading is, I was going to cancel the download. Uh, so for you, if you have downloaded the Arduino IDE, it might have, uh, it must have downloaded in the downloads page. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to download Arduino IDE in a specific folder. And uh, I suggest you cl uh, create this specific folder also, wherever you want to, for installing the Arduino IDE software, because we'll be needing this folder. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into a specific folder that I have and I'm going to create an Arduino IDE example folder as I am uh, I'm, uh, downloading this for, as an example for you. So example, okay, so I have created this particular folder. Now, uh, most probably your Arduino ID has been installed in the downloads folder. Your Arduino ID installer has been installed in the downloads folder. So I am also going to do just that. I will just download it in the downloads folder. And once it's done downloading, it's still downloading. Uh, Alright, so let's just wait for it to download and it's done. Okay. Now just open the software, uh, the files uh, and let's go to the downloads tab. Now wherever you have installed our, our Arduino ID installer from this website. So we are just going to close this uh, Chrome tab for now. And we have here in our downloads tab the Arduino IDE installer. And what we are going to do, just open this now, wherever you have downloaded just open this, double click and it takes a few minutes to a uh, few seconds to open and as you can see this is our setup here, I will just take it to one side so that it's visible, ok. So first we have our license agreement, uh, there is not much here so you can just click I agree then this is also you can just do what you want to I'll, I'm just going to do only for me and click next now this is our uh, important part so this is where we are going to install our Arduino IDE so wherever you have created your uh, folder for installing the Arduino IDE just go to there navigate to there so I did it uh, as I recall in uh, let me check this PC data then data again software and Arduino IDE example so I'm just going to click OK here so as you can see this has been updated so you just need to select what folder you have uh, created now I'm going to click install now this will take a few minutes so let's wait for that. Alright, so our Arduino IDE has finished installing. 
so i am just going to uh, click finish i want to update for this run arduino ide uh, option here so just tick this option and click finish and now in a few minutes it will it will uh, open the arduino ide software so let's just wait I'm going to close my uh, downloads folder. And as you can see, the Arduino ID software has started. So just a minute and so this should be the screen you have uh, you are met with once you install the Arduino IDE software so there will be a, a basic sketch here that like it uh, doesn't do anything and we have the whole software tab here right now um, now what we are going to do is we are going to do some uh, setups that we will require for running our CANSAC. The setup that we need to do, the first thing that we are going to do to, uh, to uh, be able to in upload our codes to the Node MCU board is we are going to go to, so you can see this menu on the left side of the screen the different option so we're going to go to the second option which is the board manager option boards manager option click on that and we're going to search esp8266 so just a minute i'll search it esp8266 so as you can see so this is basically our node mcu uh, boards uh, like you could say uh, another name for our node mcu board and it is not visible here as of now uh, so we could have installed it if it was visible here but that that is not the case because we will have to actually put in a url uh, called the uh, additional boards url for uh, to be able to install the yes uh, the node mcu uploading package so what we are going to do is so i will be sharing this particular url with everyone so i have a ba uh, have basically a link here in github where i have uh, this on this website i can get with additional board urls so i'm just gonna scroll down to the esp8266 or node mcu tab and as you can see esp8266 community and this includes the esp8266 modules uh, and here you can see node mcu so our particular version is node mcu 0.9 that is in our set rate so we just copy this link i'll put it up here somewhere uh, and i have copied this link now and i go back to the arduino tab i go to file here up here file references and then there is additional board manager urls option i paste this link there and as you can see now i have this link here i click ok and now that has been saved now uh, you may have to restart your arduino ide just close it and open it once again for these changes to take place Let's just see if they have taken place in our case. Let's search ESP. And as you can see, we have the ESP8266 uh, option here. To, uh, so we can actually install this uh, boards manager pa uh, package now to be able to upload our boards to the Node MCU board. Just click install here. And it should be 
okay just done it it is installing here you can see processing and let's wait all right successfully installed platform esp826 and that is we are done now so next what we are going to do is uh, we are going to install libraries now uh, these libraries basically uh, help us uh, to be able to read the sensors they enable us to be able to read our uh, sensors uh, that are the dhd11 uh, which reads temperature and humidity and the BMP 280 which reads temperature, pressure and altitude. So here below the boards manager option we have the library managers option. So just go here click on this it's the third option and uh, first we'll see the DHT 11 library it's called DHT sensor library. All right, just search this, and we will have the topmost option will be this only, DHT sensor library. Just click install here, and here you may be met with this option, install all. Let's do so. We we'll need to do install all because there are multiple libraries that the DHT sensor library needs to work. So let's just click install all, and successfully installed DST sensor library the next thing is the BMP library these are the BMP 280 and we want the Adafruit BMP 280 libraries this is the second option uh, it may be a different option for you uh, but we will need this particular one Adafruit BMP 280 library just click install and install all Now we need another library called Adafruit Unified Sensor for the BMP280 library to work but this has most probably been done by the install all options so we are just going to check first so just try Adafruit A-D-A-F-R-U-I-T Adafruit then Unified Sensor alright and as you can see here uh, it has already been installed by because I did the install all option. So this is basically it for the libraries and uh, next we are just going to be uploading our course to the node MCU uh, board. Now we will be uploading our code to the node MCU board. So uh, first of all, we will be plugging in, uh, plugging in our Node MCU board to our laptop. So we will need a, a, a micro USB data transfer cable for this. So I just take my cable and I just plug it into the Node MCU port. Uh, okay. And now the other side, the USB side, we are just going to connect it into a port, a USB port of our laptop. Uh, I'll just connect it. And alright, my node and shoe has been connected to the laptop. Uh, one thing you can check if your board has been properly connected and it is powered is there is a small button here on the side of the uh, port, the micro USB port and there must be RST written on it in small letter just click that button once and a blue light should flash and as you can see a blue light has flashed and that means that the board is properly powered now what we are going to do is so here as uh, the node MC 0.9 option has been automatically selected in my case but what we are going to do is we are just going to I am just going to show you in your case if the node MC 0.9 option hasn't been selected so what you want to do is uh, go to this particular option here uh, in my case node MC 0.9 is showing here 
but in your case id no uno might be showing just go here click on this and then go to select other board and port then search node mcu click on it may uh, click on the 0.9 option and make sure it is ticked here there is a tick here then in ports uh, there must be only one port showing here but if there is a uh, multiple ports showing in your option just once remove your node mcu board check what which port has disappeared and then connect it again and then which port appears that port is your node mcu so just click tick that port now both of these options just check if there is tick here make sure there is a tick on the option for the node mcu node mcu 0.9 should have a tick and whatever port your your uh, node mcu selected uh, connected on just tick that one so here uh, i have my com 9 but your com might be something else it might be com 5 it might be com 10 so just click ok now and as you can see we are, have our option here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to upload this uh, blank program to our ES, uh, node mcu now some of you might have node mcu driver problems so i have actually reverted to another driver uh, which is default on your com uh, on most computers and this gives an uh, error while uploading node mcu so we are just going to install that driver in case it is uh, not properly selected in your case so in my case like actually i have put the correct driver so you need to revert to a previous version of your driver for the node mcu to get up uh, get uploaded properly for our program to get properly uploaded to the node mcu board and i'm just going to show you if you got any error like error initializing port or something uh, we are just going to up update the drivers there so just close your node mcu port and what uh, just cl close your arduino ide and what we are going to do is we are going to go to google chrome and open a new tab and i have this link copied to my clipboard so i'll just paste this now all these links the additional boards URL link, this link, and in case we are we are going to need any other link later on, all that will be shared uh, along with the video. Uh, just enter this, and this is basically the link for uh, uh, downloading our driver that we are going to need. Just scroll down. There is a download option here. Click on download. and just download your driver i've done this and now just close your google also and now what you're going to do is we're going to go to search in our taskbar and search device manager open it open it open the device manager and now you're going to full screen this we are going to have multiple options here uh, we are just going to go to this ports option just click on the arrow beside the ports option and we have our usb serial ch340 this is our node mcu and like whatever com your node mcu was on that com will also be displayed here in my case it is com 9 now what we are going to do is we are going to right click and update driver then click browse my computer for drivers let me pick from a list of available drivers and here the all all the drivers are here that you have uh, in your case uh, some other version of driver might be there so the and if you have installed you have downloaded the driver from the link i just showed you there will be another version 3.5 just click on that so usb serial ch340 version 3.5 and click next and if once you click next and you've selected the 3.5 version the driver gets automatically updated and installed and this will show windows has successfully updated your drivers 
close all this and open Arduino IDE once again. Okay, so our Arduino IDE is, has been opened. Uh, just make sure that your node MCU option is still selected here. So in our case, uh, it was not selected, so I just selected it again. Click OK. And now, just upload. Click on this option to upload. So I didn't think I told this earlier, but beside where you, uh, the option to change boards, there are these uh, three um, buttons the tick one and the arrow one you want to click the arrow option to upload your code to the node and view board and now as you can see my code is being uploaded to the node and view board so just uh, here in the output or uh, uh, you want to see like here is where the error will come if you have any error and then just um, install the drivers in the way I have shown you all right so now we'll be looking into what our mini satellite code excuse me what our cancer code is and this can how it works I'm just going to explain to you briefly and we are going to see uh, how to we are going to connect our all our sensors to the can set and start uh, to make it work okay now uh, i'm going to show you how to download the can set code and uh, just we are just going to upload the code and i'm going to show you how to connect all the uh, sensors to the can so uh, this is the particular drive folder that um, contains the CANSAT code and there is also another file here and uh, this file basically contains the additional URLs so the uh, link we needed for downloading the ESP8266 boards package that is here and the driver that we uh, downloaded that download link is also here in this particular file so when you are just uh, when you are doing that just check out this particular file so this particular video will also be probably shared through in this drive folder only so there will be a cansat folder here and inside that there are the codes for the cansat so we are just going to right click it and then down download it so the download option here yes and we click on that so this also takes a few minutes to download and uh, now I can download it I'll just download this on the de in the desktop and it's been downloaded now you will have this this folder can set followed by some random number this is a zip file so we we are going to extract this zip file just right click it and click extract all and then click extract and it will extract your folder it will also open the folder because, but I have closed that so now we have our normal folder not a zip one we just open that and there is a can set uh, folder here and we open that again and then there is a can set file we click double click on that again and it will open Arduino ID it will open this code in Arduino ID now as you can see uh, this is our CANSAT code for reading the uh, sensor data and transmitting it to the um, ground station so here as I said the satellite the CANSAT has to connect to the internet and for this it obviously needs the Wi-Fi password so that's what we, got, we are going to do here so 
uh, just go to line 36 in your code and you will have these two um, lines const char ssid and const char password now inside these two double quotes you want to put your wi-fi name and uh, inside the password or uh, the double quotes in front of the password when you want to put your wi-fi password so if i just go to my wi-fi tab i am collect connected to the kolhatkar 5g um, option uh, wi-fi but uh, just keep this in mind the node and you cannot connect to 5g uh, 5g wi-fi networks so we will just need to connect to the kolhatkar network uh, or we just, we don't need to connect to the Kolhatkar network. The the satellite needs to connect to the Kolhatkar network. So this is the name of my network. Whatever network you have, you can just put in the name of that network and the password of that network. This is obviously case sensitive. So in uh, like in case I just make a, a Wi-Fi. So this can work on hotspot also. So if you do not have a Wi-Fi. Uh, available you can just use your phone's hotspot so like uh, you can say like if you have created a hotspot called cansat you can just say cansat here so the double quotes need to be there remember that and the password can be anything what two three four for example but as i'm going to connect to the kolhatkar network i'll just keep it like that so remember to the ch to change this according to your network or your cansat won't work then we just select our board once again like we did last time uh, while uploading our codes just select another board and port our uh, search node mcu tick node mcu 0.9 tick com 9 because my node mcu is still connected to the port so like this your node mcu needs to be connected to tick your particular com your particular usb port i ticked com 9 click ok and then we are just going to upload now as this is a pretty big code it's a few hundred long uh, lines long uh, it takes a few um, seconds to compile so we are just going to wait Okay, our board's been our code has been compiled, and now our code is being uploaded to the Node MCU board. And 100% and done. Done uploading. Now what we are going to do is. Uh, we are going to connect all our sensors to the node MCU board and then we are gonna start the CANSAT. So everyone now we have uploaded our code, mini satellite code to the node MCU board. So now what we will be doing is we will be uh, connecting our node MCU board to all these sensors, our two sensors and we will be placing this inside our uh, particular our uh, wooden model of a satellite so first let's look at what components we need first is our, ES, our node MC board so here you can see then our DST11 this is the sensor that leaves temperature and humidity the BMP280 this is the sensor that we use to uh, read the pressure and altitude then we will have few of these jumper wires you have two kinds of jumper wires here one is this female to female as you can see both of these do not have pins 
and you have more of these female to female wires and then two most probably red and black you will have two male to female uh, wires one of these ends of these wires will have a pin and the other one will not have a pin as you can see here one has a pin and the other one has not and as you can see you have two of these a red one and a black one and this we will be using to connect the batteries to our satellite so the first thing let's do or what we want to do is uh, look at also the box the wooden box so there are multiple slots in this box for uh, putting in the sensors and the biggest slot is for putting in the node MCU so as you can see the node MCU board goes into this slot this slot thing and the, all the connections or the wiring is going to be inside so on both sides of this slot the node MCU slot are two slots and here we will be uh, putting in our sensors so this is not the top this is the front of the satellite and this is the top and bottom of the satellite in the bottom of the satellite there will be a hole and in this hole the solar panel will screw in so in your case the hole might be a little small so for the first time you have to like push and like just twist it in and as you can see we have installed the solar panel on our mini satellite excuse me or can set so we just remove this solar panel for now we will be installing it later so let's just first put install the DHT11 sensor and uh, let's just put it on the right hand slot so you can put it on any slot you want so I just take my board and on this board you may see we have various pins here on both sides of the board and each pin is labeled D0, D1, D2 as you can see then there is 3V, there is ground 3V is basically a 3 volt spin it supplies a 3 volts voltage on this pin ground etc so there are multiple 3V and ground pins here so what we are going to do is we are going to take our DHT11 sensor so let's just keep the node MCU aside for now we take our DHT11 sensor we take a red female to female wire and we plug in plug it into this VCC pin the pin labeled VCC here you can see the first one so this particular pin we put in the red wire and as you can see I have connected it now then we are going to take a white wire and connect it to the data pin so as you can see the middle pin is the data pin in my case and this data uh, so your DHT might be a little different it might be a different color this main big chip will be blue but the rest of this board it may be black because some of the uh, sensor modules that we have expo uh, given out uh, are, have shipped are of a different color so just uh, take note of that but the red wire goes to the VCC the white wire goes to the data and the black wire take a black male female to female wire and put it into the ground pin GND or a ground pin so just take note uh, the DHTs they have a VCC or plus a plus pin a ground GND or minus pin and the last pin is the data pin it might be labeled something different but just remember these three things now what we are going to do is we are going to take the other set of these three pins so as you can see here the DHT is connected and the other side and we are going to put these uh, three pins through this slot so as you can see now they are inside our satellite and we are going to take these pins we are going to put our hand in and take these out from this side 
I'm going to pull them out. And now we have a DST line sensor. We can just stick it using double tape on this side of the satellite. So let me just... So for now I won't be using double tape. I'll just leave it hanging here. But if you want, you can use double tape and put double tape here and just put it on the side of this body. Now we are going to connect these three wires of the DHD to the node MCU. So first we take our node MCU and if we put our, the USB port in front of us, we want to connect our pins, the DHD 11 pins on the left hand side pins of the board MCU. So if you look at the left hand side pins, somewhere in the middle you will see a 3V, a 3V pin, this is a 3V pin and a G or ground or minus pin. Okay, so we have the 3V and G pin. To the 3V pin we connect our red wire. Remember our red wire connects to the VCC of the D, uh, DHT line. So these are just all different kinds of ways of saying plus or positive VCC, plus, 3V, etc. Then so we have connected our red wire or the VCC wire to the 3V pin of the node MCU. You can see this has been connected. Then beside the 3V pin there is a G or minus pin just and I'll show it to you this is the G pin and I'm going to connect the red wire to the G pin or the, the ground pin and then we take our white wire which is the data wire and we connect it to a pin labeled D5 now this is or beside the G, G or ground pin D5 this one And we just connect our data pin to this D5 pin and there we have it we have connected our DSD 11 to the node MCU these are all the connections we are going to need next what we are going to do is we are going to connect the BMP280 sensor to our node MCU so for this we find the VCC pin this will be the first pin as usual we take a male to ma female to female red wire connect that to the VCC then after that after VCC is the ground pin and to the ground pin we connect a female to female black wire after that is a pin labeled SCL this SCL pin to this we connect a green female to female wire and after that is a pin labeled SDA just a minute if I can focus on that SDA as you can see this one and to this we connect our yellow female to female wire now these are the connection all the connections on the BMP side uh, and as usual we just take the other side of these wires and we just take the box and we slot the wires through and we bring them out on the other side as we have done to ok now we have our BMP280 sensors connections done. Now we are going to connect these to the node MCU board. Now uh, there will be another 3V and ground pins pair uh, on this uh, node MCU board. So this one, these are the uh, first and second pins 3V and ground. So these two pins we are going to connect as usual 3V to red or 3V to positive 
N3 and the black wire to ground or G which is beside 3V connected so now this looks something like this red and black next on the other side of the board over here there is a D1 pin which is second pin from the other side and the D2 pin the D1 and D2 pins and to this we take a connector SCL which is a green pin and the SDA which is the yellow pin so let me connect our green pin to the D1 pin here so you can see green goes to D1 and the yellow one the yellow pin uh, wire goes to the D2 pin you can see the D2 pin we have connected it so now basically most of the connections of the node MCU are done now we just take our red male to female wire and we connect it to this pin uh, to another 3V pin so just a minute we just connect these uh, wire, uh, this red wire to another 3V pin on the other side of the board so all our sensor connections are on the left hand side of the board and we are going to connect these two on the 3V pin on the right hand side of the board over here I think it is the fifth pin connect that and as you can see just a minute the wires need to use red to 3V then the black black uh, wires we are going to take the black male to female wire and we are going to connect it into the ground pin beside the 3V pin you can see connected into the G pin the black one and the 3V pin the red one so now what we can do is we are going to take this these two wires and we are going to slot them into the DHT slot so if this is a little difficult what you can do is first you can put them through the DHT slot and you can bring them to this side and then you can connect it I I actually connect, uh, connected it a little wrong so I did it in a diff wrong order so that's why I it, I had a little difficulty putting it uh, through the DHT slot so let's just connect all of this and we are going to just put on the node and see and we are basically done with the wiring and we can just put in our solar panel now just uh, plug it into the hole and we are just going to screw it in and there we have it we are done with the satellite work uh, so there is another component that will have been shipped with our satellite that is our battery it will look something like this with its two pins now to power the satellite basically we just connect the red red pin sticking out here to the red pin of the battery so there is the just a minute if I can show you alright yes so the red pin to the red side and the black pin to the black side and that will power the node MC so now as you can see if I press reset the LED flashes so first of all we are going to check this satellite using our laptop and then we will uh, basically just like check the data if it's coming on the web page okay now we have connected our uh, two sensors the dst11 and bmp280 to our node mcu board and we have connected this all inside our miniature uh, satellite a wooden satellite um, model so now our cancer is pretty much done 
now we just need to uh, get the web page link that we need to see all the data um, on the web page so just connect your uh, micro usb uh, cable that used to that you use to um, upload your code to the node mc just connect that to the node mc and the other side is connected to the laptop so now our node mc is powered we are just going to select com 9 again okay and then we are going to open the serial monitor to see the web page link which is being transmitted by the uh, node mc to the laptop so open uh, go to the right hand side of the in the right hand uh, corner side of the screen there is this particular uh, two icons first is the serial plotter and the other the rightmost one is the serial monitor just click on that click on the serial monitor then here this uh, option should be set to 9600 so if your option is set to something else just scroll and find the 9600 option then we are going to press the reset button on this node MCU. The RSD button over here um, beside the, the micro USB port. Just click that. And now we are getting some dots here, which means the node MCU is trying to connect to our Wi Fi and as you can see, connected to Kolhatka, which is the name of my Wi Fi. If this dot 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 keeps happening, then most probably you have entered the wrong Wi-Fi password and or password or name. So just go here in line 36 and 37 and just make sure that these both are correct. Then the other thing that the node MCU is telling us is IP address and this particular link. And this uh, these set of numbers are basically the link we need for our web page. I am going to close all other tabs. And I'm going to paste this link that I copied and enter. And now our web page is open, and in that, this node MC is transmitting all the data to our uh, uh, web page. So, what you can do now is uh, like now we are getting all the humidity, temperature, altitude, etc. values in a line graph. So we can try changing, our, so this is real time data. So we can try changing the environment around us to uh, get some changes in the readings. Like uh, for example, our breath is warm so and it is humid. So uh, not humid, it, is, it has moisture in it. So our breath has lots of moisture in it. So let's just try breathing on the sensor and let's see if that increases the humidity or temperature. So I'm just going to breathe on the sensor. So as you can see, the humidity value immediately started increasing. And it has reached around 75. So it went from 48 to around 75. So like this we can observe different kinds of changes in the temperature humidity altitude etc by changing the uh, environment around us now so this is pretty much uh, we have made the mini satellite if you want to if you want to just uh, see uh, connect the start the satellite without using the USB port then we can connect the satellite to the battery just connect the red wire as I explained while we were connecting our uh, wiring wires just connect the red wire coming from the satellite to the red, uh, red wire of the battery and the black wire coming from the satellite to the black wire of the battery and the your satellite will be running uh, without your usb port now just remove the usb port first make sure to do that don't connect the battery and the usb port at the same time or something might just burn and uh, just put in the once you've connected your battery just like wait few moments 
to like just let your satellite connect to the Wi-Fi and just put in your URL that you have gotten here and uh, once you put in that URL, you will start getting your data. So this is pretty much it for the satellite. Thank you.